Hi guys and welcome back to Machine Learning Libraries with C++. This is section 6, the summary. So in this section we're going to take a look at firstly a comparison of libraries and then also how we choose the right library. So first video 6.1, comparison of libraries, where you know we're going to be taking a look at, surprise surprise, a comparison of the libraries. And then that's back to where we should be now. So let's go back to Shark, the first one. Now I thought Shark was very well documented and it had plenty of support online. Um, and then the website was clean, lots of nice examples. It's very kind of user friendly um, and also very quick to kind of get up and running with, in my experience. Um, and it's also very fast, it's very well programmed. Uh, there's a whole suite of contributors to that and they do very well, so thank you to you guys. Um, yeah, it's got almost all the essential algorithms that you could want. Um, a lot of supervised learning, not a lot, not as much unsupervised, but still um, all your essential ones are there, all your essential algorithms. Um, it's also got methods for linear algebra and optimization, which come in very handy um, when you're doing machine learning or you want to minimize something. So, you know, it's a very kind of clean, easy to use, out the box solution. So next up is MLPack. Um, it's very similar to Shark in the, in the fact that it's very easy to use. It's got a nice clean API, well documented um, with plenty of tutorials. So you can always just reference online and work out how to do something. It's not a problem. Um, what sets it apart from the others is the fact um, it depends on the Armadillo library. So you have to use that. And the Armadillo library is really quite useful um, when it comes to containing big well, big data structures and large amounts of data. So MLPack's got a good vote in my opinion. Um, next up is Dlib. Now Dlib is very large. Um, it's got loads of functionality and lo it covers loads of almost kind of like niche um, algorithms and implementations of algorithms for different, you know, kind of tweaks of functions. So if you're using the Euclidean distance, you can use radial basis functions and things like that, which are available in the others, but Dlib's really highly configurable, which makes it extremely powerful. Yeah, there's also plenty of other support, such as image reading and multi-threading, so it can be used as kind of like a standalone library. I do I have found, I found the website a little bit harder to navigate than the others, um, but I think that's because there's not, there's not a whole team there's just one guy who's done a fantastic job, so well done to you. But yeah, I think if you were to put the time into Dlib, it would become incredibly powerful and incredibly useful, but I think out of the box it takes a little bit longer to get to grips with. So next up is OpenCV, um, not a machine learning library as per se, but it is very useful um, if you want to do machine learning with computer vision data. And I do recommend, you know, that you all get up to grips with OpenCV because image data is probably what you know it's very it's a large sector of machine learning but um yeah there's almost any kind of computer vision algorithm will be in OpenCV um it's incredibly powerful it's very large but there's also a lot of support for it online so that was it that was just a brief summary um a comparison of all the libraries that we've looked at um you know I do suggest you make your own opinion as to which ones you find special. Um, 